Hi, I just thought I'd do an up-to-date video on how to apply some plaster. Now, uh, what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna uh, apply plaster to Rachel's forearm to simulate the fact that she may have a fractured wrist and we wanna immobilize the joint here. Okay, so uh, I'll just go over that sort of thing. But before we do a plastering, I like to uh, do circulation observations on the limb. So whenever we do circulation observations on an uh, affected limb, we do the normal limb first. So if we're pretending that there's a fracture here, we wanna look at what Rachel's circulation is like here. So we count one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. So there's some capillary return here. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, capillary return there. So that's fantastic. So that tells us that uh, it gives us a bit of a baseline to sort of work towards. Now I'm gonna be doing a plaster in the context of how I was taught in a fracture clinic. So in a fracture clinic, it's not acute. It's, we've got time to do things and we're assuming that the plaster is going to stay on for quite a long time. What we usually do in the fracture clinic is that we'll apply moisturiser to the limb, which I'm not going to do to Rachel today. Um, once the moisturiser is applied, because we want to look after the skin as much as we can, the skin and is going to be non-visible after we put a plaster on for up to some weeks. So we just want to make sure that we're looking after it beforehand. So what we want to do is that we want to measure where the crease of the hand is to about mid bicep. So if we take that rough measurement, and it doesn't have to be exact, for Rachel, we're gonna custom make this <clears throat> up to about here. So what we're also gonna do is that we're just gonna cut a little circle here where Rachel's thumb's gonna go. Um, don't make the mistake of making the circle too large as well. And if it's too small, we can just work our thumb around it. Now, remember, if this is fractured, then it's gonna be quite painful for the patient. So, but the patient is able to help. So the patient is able to sort of run their fingers through the stockinette, which we call the stockinette, as we go through and Rachel, yep. Yeah, so see how Rachel just found where the thumb is and we've got our measurements up there. So um, what I like to do too, is just to give myself a little bit of a rough idea where the crease is and Rachel needs to be able to actually have her hand in a neutral position when we finish the procedure so that she can, she can, she can drink. Okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> any comments about drinking, Rachel? No, probably not. No. So, <clears throat> the next thing to put on is this stuff that, um, it's a, it's just a, I guess like a cotton soft type of application, which is going to be another barrier between the plaster and Rachel's skin. All right, so I like to put it shorter from where that stock in it is and like to wrap it around. And look, this cotton stuff is very forgiving. You can customize it to the patient. It doesn't have to be an exact measurement. You can just tear it off here. I can actually wrap Rachel's thumb around it. And again, I've got a bit of a reference of where that line is of where I want the plaster to be. Now, this is the messy part here. So I wanna get the plaster and measurement from where that line is underneath and inside the lower part of where the stockinette is. Now I've got my measurement, I'll just quickly fold it. I like to fold, it, look, depending on what we're dealing with, if we're dealing with somebody that's a little bit confused or maybe a kid that's quite hyperactive, um, then we'll probably do maybe 12 folds. But if it's on an adult that's gonna look after their limb or whatever and that's gonna follow instructions, we can do around sort of um, you know eight to 10. So this can just tear off. The plastering is actually quite forgiving. Um, so where the measurement is, I'm just gonna put like a semicircular sort of moon shape where Rachel's thumb is. And then I just noticed that her crease is a little bit sort of on an angle. So I'll just cut a little bit of an angle here to just customize it to Rachel's, to Rachel's limb in particular. And everybody's creases are different as well too. So Chris, if you just want to come over, I just want to show the um, I just want to show the guys how will I actually sort of hold this. So what I'll do is I kind of get both my fingers like in a scissor motion, and I hold it up this end, and I just pass the plaster in warm water. So the warmer the water, the faster the plaster sets. And so I just take these two fingers, and I get rid of the excess water and now it's ready for application, okay? 
So um, I'm just gonna place this here, Rachel. So this is a, an opportunity for me to check that I'm happy where the line is underneath there, where I've actually marked it with a texture. And I don't mind leaving a little bit of water on the plaster as well too, because it kind of like, I guess it kind of molds in with where the cotton is and it becomes kind of like just one particular unit, which is kind of what we're after. Now, the next thing I need to do, and the last thing I need to do, is I just need to apply bandage. So, um, just take a simple crepe bandage is fine. And what I'll then do is, Rachel, I'll get you to um, shape your hand as though you're gonna be um, holding a cup. So, that shape here is very much like a neutral position. And that's how Rachel, this hand should be. Now, what I like to do is I like to apply a little bit of tension, well, a fair amount of tension to the area, okay? And the reason why I like to do that is that when you're dealing with fractures, especially if they've just occurred, compression seems to be something that's quite relieving. It's a way of managing some pain control. Now, remember, we're doing this in the context of maybe a fracture clinic, and not out in the bush somewhere where we're doing pressure immobilization technique on an envenomation or something like that, okay? But I do exactly what we're doing now um, in the context of, say, an injury. Uh, my kids play soccer, so uh, quite a few times I've had to, you know, do plastering until, you know, the ambulance has arrived or the, the transport's arrived. Um, I'll, I'll usually tape this down as well too. So now that I've done that, see where the stockinette folds over? Where the stockinette folds over, it's important to have that fold there because the plaster itself has a potential to be a little bit sharp and uh, you don't want anything sharp on somebody's skin as well too. So now that that's done, I give the patient's hand a bit of a clean. I'll do my final circulation observations. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. 1, 1,000. It's actually a little bit better on this one, okay? So the next thing we need to do is that we need to elevate the arm. Um, Post-procedure instructions would be to get the patient to elevate their arm as much as we can, and then we put a sling on. But I'm gonna do a separate video on how to put on a sling because the guys at the Fracture Clinic also showed me how to apply a sling, which is a little bit different than a lot of your first aid courses. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you soon.